beginning of winter here at Hamas and winter for me is a time for slowing down and a time for reflecting and one of the things I've been thinking about lately is why do I do what I do because on one level it doesn't make a lot of sense I'm planting trees that are not going to mature in my lifetime you see we've taken a sheep field and we're transforming it into a model homestead and the principles that underpin that are all about building soil fertility and increasing ecosystem productivity and for that to be successful it takes good design careful stewardship a lot of hard work and time and if you're taking a piece of upland degraded upland and turning it into the Garden of Eden it takes a long time and so this project isn't going to become realized until long after I'm gone and so it's clear to me that I'm doing this for future generations now, whether that's my children, or my grandchildren, or somebody else's children, or somebody else's grandchildren. And that leads me to thinking about the Future Generations Act. You see, here in Wales, we have this piece of law that stipulates that all development is supposed to benefit future generations. In itself, it's a progressive, radical, incredibly forward-thinking policy. But it's been there 10 years now, and on the ground, nothing's really changing. Mainstream society is still completely caught up in a consumer-based capitalism it's pretty much business as usual and this leads me to conclude that there isn't going to be a political or a legislative solution to the human predicament similarly I see lots of electric cars these days, lots of wind farms, lots of solar farms. But nothing's actually changing. Year on year there's more pollution, more and more extreme weather events, less and less wildlife. I don't think there's going to be an industrial or an economic solution that is going to rebalance the human relationship with the natural world. The only time I see real change is when people go off grid. It's when people get a piece of land and are able to grow their own food, to generate their own renewable power, to harvest their own water. To redesign the landscape so that it operates on a human scale and prioritises biodiversity and productivity and resilience. And then people are more independent from the mainstream and they don't need so much money. And they live in a landscape that is beautiful and abundant and productive and so they don't need to travel so much and they're connecting with their neighbours who are doing similar things and together we're building community and we're creating a new culture and it's that collective of micro solutions that brings about real change tangible And so that's where I think the solution lies.
lots of micro solutions in a human scale stewardship. And that way, we can leave a positive legacy for future generations.